Forget everything you thought you knew about movies. The films we're about to explore didn't just push boundaries, they obliterated them. These 20 moments in classic cinema didn't just court controversy, they married it. The Birth of a Nation D.W. Griffith's silent epic The Birth of a Nation hit theaters on February 8, 1915. The film ran for over three hours and cost an unprecedented $110,000 to produce. Its controversial content centered on the Civil War and Reconstruction era, portraying the Ku Klux Klan as heroic figures and depicting black Americans in an overwhelmingly negative light. The NLDLACP launched a nationwide protest against the film. In Boston, 500 people stormed the State House to demand the film be banned. Despite the outcry, President Woodrow Wilson screened the film at the White House, reportedly remarking, it's like writing history with lightning. The film's technical innovations were groundbreaking. Griffith introduced new camera techniques, including the use of iris effects and careful placement of the camera to guide the viewer's eye. These advancements in filmmaking came at a steep social cost as the movie reignited racial tensions and contributed to a resurgence of the Ku Klux Klan in the 1920s. Hexen, Benjamin Christensen's Swedish-Danish silent film Hexen premiered on September 18, 1922. The film, whose title translates to The Witch, was a groundbreaking exploration of witchcraft and demonology. With a budget of nearly 2 million Swedish kroner, it was the most expensive Scandinavian silent film ever made. Hexen was structured in seven distinct chapters, blending documentary-style historical recreations with fictional narratives. The film's intense scenes startled audiences. One particularly controversial scene showed a woman giving birth to demons. Christensen spent two years researching the subject, drawing heavily from the 15th century treatise Malleus Maleficarum. He used a combination of live actors and stop-motion animation to create disturbing visuals of demons and monsters. The film was banned in the United States and heavily censored in other countries due to its explicit content. Freaks. Todd Browning's Freaks shocked audiences upon its release on February 20, 1932. The film featured real carnival performers with physical disabilities, including conjoined twins Daisy and Violet Hilton, and Prince Randian, known as the Living Torso. MGM studio head Irving Thalberg initially envisioned a horror film to rival Universal's Frankenstein. However, the result was far more controversial than anticipated. The original cut ran 90 minutes, but after disastrous test screenings, it was edited down to just 64 minutes. One infamous scene where the freaks take revenge on a trapeze artist caused a woman to threaten a lawsuit against MGM, claiming the film had caused her to suffer a miscarriage. The film was banned in the UK for 30 years and was a commercial failure, effectively ending Browning's career. Olga Baklanova, who played the trapeze artist, later recalled, the most shocking thing for me was the scene where the midget was made to look like he was going to marry me. Oh, I just couldn't stand it. It was very difficult for me. Ecstasy Gustav Machati's Czech film Ecstasy premiered on January 20, 1933, starring a young Hedy Lamarr, then Hedy Kiesler, in her first major role. The film became well known for being the first mainstream movie to depict an intimate scene and a woman's experience of pleasure in a non-explicit way. The film featured provocative scenes, including Lamar swimming unclothed and running through the woods. The most talked about moment was a close-up of Lamar's face during a heightened emotional scene. The director, Machati, created this effect by discreetly using a safety pin off-camera. Pope Pius XI denounced the film as evil, and it was banned in numerous countries. In the United States, customs officials seized and burned copies of the film. Lamar later expressed regret over her participation, stating in her autobiography, I had been duped and framed, my career was in ruins. Despite the controversy, the film won an award at the Venice Film Festival. It remains a significant work in the history of erotic cinema and a landmark in the depiction of female sexuality on screen. Peeping Tom, Michael Powell's Peeping Tom premiered in British cinemas on April 7, 1960 surprising audiences with its unsettling portrayal of voyeurism and suspense. 
The film centers on Mark Lewis, a cameraman who captures the final moments of women on film as part of his disturbing obsession. Powell used innovative techniques to put the audience in the killer's perspective, including a rifle-like camera with crosshairs and a spike attached to its tripod. This first-person approach was groundbreaking and deeply unsettling for viewers. The film's reception was overwhelmingly negative. Critic Derek Hill of the Tribune wrote, The only really satisfactory way to dispose of Peeping Tom would be to shovel it up and flush it down the nearest sewer. Peeping Tom effectively ended Powell's career in Britain. It took nearly two decades for the film to be reassessed and recognized as a masterpiece of psychological horror. Martin Scorsese, who led efforts to restore the film, said, I have always felt that Peeping Tom and Hitchcock's Psycho are wedded. They came out within months of each other, and they're both about the same things. Psycho Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho debuted on June 16, 1960, reshaping the horror genre and challenging the limits of mainstream cinema. The film's famous shower scene in which Marion Crane, Janet Leigh, meets a violent end, stunned audiences with its intensity and daring depiction. Hitchcock shot the shower scene over seven days, using 77 different camera angles. The scene contains 50 cuts in just three minutes. Chocolate syrup was used for blood, as it showed up better in black and white. Lee later revealed that she couldn't take showers for years after filming the scene. Psycho cost $806,947 to produce and grossed over $50 million worldwide. Despite its commercial success, some critics were initially harsh. Bosley Crowther of the New York Times called it a blot on an honorable career. Time has vindicated the film, with many now considering it one of the greatest films ever made. Viridiana Luis Buñuel's Viridiana premiered at the Cannes Film Festival on May 17, 1961, where it won the Palme d'Or. The film's blasphemous content and edgy themes sparked immediate controversy, particularly in Buñuel's native Spain, which was under the rule of conservative dictator Francisco Franco. The film follows a novice nun, Viridiana, whose attempt to help the poor leads to disaster. One of the most controversial scenes parodies Leonardo da Vinci's The Last Supper, with beggars posing in the positions of Jesus and his disciples. The Spanish government, which had initially approved the script, banned the film and ordered all copies destroyed. The Vatican newspaper L'Osservatore Romano called it blasphemous. Buñuel, who was in exile in Mexico, quipped, I didn't deliberately set out to be blasphemous, but then Pope John XXIII is a better judge of such things than I am. Despite the ban in Spain, a copy of the film was smuggled to France, allowing it to be screened at Cannes. The controversy actually boosted the film's international profile, cementing Buñuel's reputation as a provocative auteur. A Clockwork Orange Stanley Kubrick's adaptation of Anthony Burgess's novel, A Clockwork Orange, premiered on December 19, 1971. The film's intense depictions of brutality, combined with its highly stylized approach, sparked widespread controversy. Kubrick used a variety of techniques to create the film's unsettling atmosphere. He employed wide-angle lenses to distort the image and create a sense of unease. The film's language, Nodsat, was a mix of Russian, English, and invented slang, adding to its alien feel. In the UK, the film was linked to several brutal crimes allegedly inspired by it. In response, Kubrick himself withdrew the film from British distribution in 1973. It remained unavailable in the UK until after Kubrick's death in 1999. The film's star, Malcolm McDowell, suffered physical damage during filming. The scene where his character's eyes are forced open causes scratched corneas and temporary blindness. McDowell later said, There was no CGI then, that's my eyes, man, I nearly lost my sight. Despite the controversy, or perhaps because of it, A Clockwork Orange was a box office success, grossing $26.6 million on a budget of $2.2 million. It was nominated for four Academy Awards, including Best Picture. The Devils Ken Russell's The Devils premiered on July 16, 1971, startling audiences with its provocative mix of sexuality, intense themes, and religious symbolism. Based on Aldous Huxley's The Devils of Laudun, the film explores alleged demonic possession in 17th-century France. 
Derek Jarman's production design featured minimalist white sets that created a stark contrast with the film's bold content, including a controversial scene where nuns interact inappropriately with a religious statue. British censors demanded extensive cuts before allowing the film's release. The United States gave it an X rating, while Italy banned it entirely. Warner Bros. still refuses to release the uncut version, with film historian Mark Kermode calling it the most famous film that no one has ever seen. Oliver Reed, who played the lead role of Father Grandier, later said, We never set out to make a pretty film. Despite the controversy, or perhaps because of it, the Devils grossed over $11 million at the box office, equivalent to about $70 million today. Last House on the Left Wes Craven's directorial debut, Last House on the Left, hit theaters on August 30, 1972. The film's tagline, To avoid fainting, keep repeating, it's only a movie, only a movie, hinted at its shocking content. Shot on a budget of just $87,000, the film used a documentary-style approach to enhance its realism. Craven employed handheld cameras and naturalistic acting, blurring the line between fiction and reality. The film's intense depictions of abuse and cruelty challenged the boundaries of what was considered acceptable in cinema. Censors in many countries demanded cuts or outright banned the film. In the UK, it was refused a certificate and became one of the most prominent video nasties of the 1980s. It wasn't granted an official release there until 2008. Actor David Hess, who played the villain Krug, composed the film's incongruously upbeat soundtrack. This juxtaposition of cheerful music with horrific imagery added to the film's unsettling nature. Craven later reflected, I wanted to show aggression as something ugly and unavoidable in human nature. The Exorcist William Friedkin's The Exorcist opened on December 26, 1973, becoming an immediate sensation and changing the face of horror cinema. Based on William Peter Blatty's novel, the film cost $12 million to produce and grossed over $441 million worldwide. The film's special effects were groundbreaking. For the famous head-spinning scene, a life-sized animatronic model of Linda Blair was created. The vomit projected in the film was actually a mixture of pea soup and oatmeal. Reports of audience members fainting, vomiting, and fleeing theaters circulated widely. In the UK, St. John Ambulance staffed some screenings. The British tabloid The Sun reported, The Exorcist takes a chokehold on the senses and never lets go. Rumors of a curse on the production spread after several cast and crew members or their relatives died during filming. Friedkin dismissed these claims, stating, All the deaths were coincidental. The film received 10 Academy Award nominations, winning two. It remains one of only a handful of horror films ever nominated for Best Picture. Cannibal Holocaust Ruggiero Deodato's Cannibal Holocaust premiered in Italy on February 7, 1980. The film's realistic portrayal of brutality and actual animal killings sparked immediate controversy and legal trouble for its creators. Deodato used found footage techniques, presenting the film as recovered documentary footage. This approach was so convincing that Italian authorities initially believed the actors had been killed on camera. Deodato had to produce the actors in court to prove they were still alive. The film was banned in over 50 countries due to its extreme content. In Italy, Deodato faced charges of obscenity and wrongful death, with the latter dropped when he proved the deaths were simulated. However, he was prosecuted for animal cruelty due to the real on-screen killings of several animals. Despite its notoriety, or perhaps because of it, Cannibal Holocaust has grossed an estimated 200 million worldwide. Critics remain divided, with some dismissing it as exploitation and others praising its commentary on media sensationalism. Deodato himself stated, I was trying to show how the media can manipulate reality. Cruising William Friedkin's Cruising, starring Al Pacino, opened on February 15, 1980, immediately sparking protests from gay rights activists. The film, which follows a police detective investigating murders in New York's gay leather bar scene, was accused of promoting harmful stereotypes. 
During production, protesters disrupted filming by blowing whistles and air horns. Friedkin claimed that 80% of the film's dialogue had to be re-recorded due to the noise. The protests even extended to the film's premiere, where demonstrators picketed theaters. Friedkin made numerous cuts to secure an R rating, removing about 40 minutes of footage. The missing scenes, rumored to contain more explicit content, have never been released. Despite the controversy, or perhaps because of it, Cruising grossed $19.8 million at the box office. Pacino later reflected, I would do it again. I don't worry about taking chances. The film has since been reassessed by some critics as a complex, if problematic, exploration of identity and sexuality. Caligula Caligula, produced by Penthouse founder Bob Guccione, premiered on February 1, 1980, after a troubled production and legal battles. With a budget of $17.5 million, it was the most expensive pornographic film ever made at the time. The film's original director, Tinto Brass, clashed with Guccione over the film's content. Guccione eventually excluded Brass from the editing room and incorporated explicit adult scenes that he filmed himself along with Giancarlo Luis. The film's intense portrayals of intimacy and brutality surprised audiences and critics alike. Roger Ebert famously wrote, Caligula is sickening, utterly worthless, shameful trash. Despite this, or perhaps because of it, the film grossed about $23 million at the box office. The cast included respected actors like Malcolm McDowell, Helen Mirren, and Peter O'Toole. Mirren later defended her participation, stating, Everyone was rather uncomfortable, but we soldiered on. Various cuts of the film exist, ranging from 86 to 156 minutes. The uncut version remains banned in several countries. Despite its notoriety, Caligula has developed a cult following over the years. The Last Temptation of Christ Martin Scorsese's The Last Temptation of Christ opened on August 12, 1988, immediately sparking protests from religious groups. Based on Nikos Kazantzakis's novel, the film depicts a human, doubtful Jesus who imagines a life without crucifixion. The controversy began even before filming started. Paramount Pictures dropped the project due to pressure from religious groups. Universal eventually picked it up with a reduced budget of $7 million. The film's portrayal of Jesus envisioning a romantic relationship with Mary Magdalene sparked significant controversy. Protests occurred at theaters worldwide. In Paris, a cinema showing the film was firebombed, injuring 13 people. Despite the outcry, many critics praised the film. It received an Academy Award nomination for Best Director. Scorsese defended his work, stating, I wanted to create a Jesus that viewers could relate to. The film grossed $8.4 million domestically, a modest sum considering the controversy. However, it has since been recognized as a significant work in Scorsese's filmography and religious cinema in general. Natural Born Killers Oliver Stone's Natural Born Killers hit theaters on August 26, 1994, igniting a debate about media glorification of violence. The film, based on a story by Quentin Tarantino, follows two serial killers who become media celebrities. Stone used a variety of filming techniques, including animation, rear projection, and multiple film stocks, creating a disorienting, hallucinatory effect. The film contains 3,000 cuts, compared to 600 to 700 in most films of that length. The movie faced censorship issues in several countries. In the U.S., Stone had to make over 150 cuts to secure an R rating. The film was banned outright in Ireland until 2001. Controversy erupted when the film was linked to several copycat crimes. In 1995, Sarah Edmondson and Benjamin Darris went on a killing spree allegedly inspired by the movie. This led to a lawsuit against Stone and Time Warner, which was eventually dismissed. Despite the controversy, or perhaps because of it, the film grossed $50.3 million domestically. Kids Larry Clark's Kids premiered at the Sundance Film Festival on January 25, 1995, startling audiences with its unfiltered portrayal of adolescent relationships and drug use. The film follows a group of New York City teenagers over 24 hours, exploring dark themes. Shot on a budget of $1.5 million, the film used a cast of mostly non-professional actors to enhance its realism. 
The script was written by 19-year-old Harmony Kareen in just three weeks. The film's candid portrayal of adolescent relationships and drug use generated immediate controversy. It was rated NC-17 in the U.S., limiting its distribution. Miramax, owned by Disney at the time, created a new company, Shining Excalibur Films, to release the film and avoid controversy for its parent company. Despite, or perhaps because of, the controversy, Kids grossed $20.4 million worldwide. It launched the careers of several actors, including Chloe Sevigny and Rosario Dawson. Crash! David Cronenberg's Crash, based on J.G. Ballard's novel, premiered at the Cannes Film Festival on May 17, 1996. The film's exploration of symphorophilia, finding sexual excitement in car crashes, quickly generated controversy. At Cannes, jury president Francis Ford Coppola was reportedly so disturbed by the film that he refused to hand Cronenberg the special jury prize in person. In the UK, Westminster Council banned the film outright, while many other councils restricted its screening. The film's clinical approach to its subject matter, featuring graphic scenes and car crashes, shocked many viewers. Ted Turner, whose company owned the film's distribution rights, tried to prevent its release in the US, calling it really weird. Despite the controversy, Crash received critical acclaim. It won the New York Film Critics Circle Award for Best Director. The film grossed $2 million in North America, a modest sum given its limited release. However, it has since become a cult classic, recognized for its unflinching exploration of the relationship between technology, sexuality, and human psychology.